You know, there's something to be said about attending a service like this, a blue Christmas service, amidst the joy this season brings or that the culture tells us we must bring. This service will require us and allow us to be really honest, transparent and vulnerable with ourselves and with each other. I find it to be visceral and real. In many ways, this holiday, the Christmas season, is about vulnerability and acknowledging the dark parts of our lives. I mean, our Savior did choose to come in the most vulnerable form possible, after all, as a human babe, dependent on none other than other broken people to survive, dependent on Mary and Joseph to bring this baby into the world and protect this light and this hope uh, that he brings from dark forces that wish to extinguish it. When you really think about it, the entire season is about acknowledging our brokenness and allowing the light and hope that the Christ child brings to comfort and to heal us. And the reality is, all of us, none of us, uh, are, are, are exempt from this. All of us have something to acknowledge and to grieve, whether it's an illness, a breakup, an addiction, a loss of a job or a loved one, or the frustration of trying to find a job. It could be any number of things that bring us here tonight. And I come here with my own losses, the loss of a husband on none other than Christmas Day, 19 years ago, the loss of my mother this past summer, and I grieve still all my losses. When someone we love dies, we never get over it. Instead, we learn ever so slowly to live with the gap that's left behind, and we gradually start to rebuild. Life is a great mystery, full of love, joy, loss, and grief. As the years have come and gone since my own great loss, those 19 years ago, the joy of Christmas has returned, and yet there still remains some grief. And that is okay, and that is why we have this service. And just recently, uh, we had a group uh, that went out to the Capitol Lighting. We had a booth out there, and we invited folks from all walks of life to write intercessions of what they're thinking about this Christmas, and I wanted to just read a few because we want to honor uh, the folks who, uh, who put their prayers in here, and so I want to read a few of those, all right? So it says, Grandma. <laughs> it says, to those who have lost loved ones during the holiday season, for better health and academic success, may we carry the spirit of giving throughout the year. Prayer for our family, we lost our pet in a tragic accident. Please pray for my tia uh, in Mexico. She was just diagnosed with stage three cancer. Pray for the health of loved ones, mother, sister, especially grandmother, also me, for a bright future for all my friends and family for the health and well-being of our family and loved ones. So you can see there's a lot of common themes here. Goodwill comes soon to all. For all my friends alone during the holidays, praying for everyone to feel happiness this Christmas, for our family and friends to be together and happy, for our family and friends to be together, for my family and friends, for their health, for well-being, for the hope of the better new year. For our family to get our forever home. Blessings for Austinites experiencing hunger. Prayer for health and family. Pray for Jim's soul in heaven. Peace in the world. More help to our environment. Peace for all. 
prosperity for all my business ventures. <laughs> Kindness and inner peace for all. We see that. Success in 2023. I pray you have a wonderful holiday and a great new year. May we better listen to and understand one another so we can coexist in peace. And those are just from a few people. All of us come here with our own stories, with our own grief, with our own losses with our own whatever. The story of Christmas and the Incarnation reminds me of this mystery and how we can hold both joy and grief together. That God, that God that so loved the world that he sent his only son to live this risky life among us and die so unfairly, and how he did this so that all who could believe in him should not have that sense of endless death and destruction, but have the hope of life and knowledge of a future and the life that somehow rebuilt around us by the grace and love of God. And so now, every year, as Christmas approaches, Victoria and I, my daughter, think of sweet and beautiful ways to honor her father, my mother, and her grandmothers, but the most essential part of all of this is that we intentionally make the decision to spend it together. Not filling our time with endless and empty shopping, but rather things that give us comfort and joy. So this morning, before the cold came in, we threw a frisbee around, and it was fun. <laughs> Whether it's cuddling up to watch some traditional Christmas time movies, baking cinnamon rolls on Christmas morning, or playing some silly games, we do it together. Now that doesn't negate the grief that, there, that is there or the bitter reality of the losses that we've endured, but recognizing that even in the dark moments of life, there is hope. So my prayer for those who are in their darkest of dark moments, which I remember so well, is for that hope that heals and strengthens and draws us ever so slightly forward. Because of that infant child who was born and risked and died and rose again and offers life to us and to all whom we love. God shows up in Jesus, not to end all of our suffering and struggles, but to show us that we can share it and let it go, expose it to the light of God's love and to help us to bear it and to forgive it and to have hope in spite of it, that it will all be redeemed, not by our efforts, but always and only by God's grace in the end. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what the Christmas story is all about. Amen. <laughs>